Well, the ratings are cratering for Commie Olympics. Joining me now to discuss this, the host of the Michael Knowles show, a show and author of Speechless, Controlling Words, Controlling Minds, Michael Knowles himself, along with presidential historian, Reagan biographer, and New York Times bestselling author of December 1941, Mr. Craig Shirley. Gentlemen, great to have you. Michael, in my view, America shouldn't legitimize the Communist Olympics by allowing our athletes to go. We could have arranged an alternative competition. That's what can-do societies do. Countries do that in the face of adversity. With ratings in the toilet, could it be that Americans have a moral center that our politicians don't have anymore? Just more evidence of this disconnect between D.C. and the voters? That certainly is the case, although I can't decide which I care less about, the China Olympics or the Oscars. That's going to be the real competition this year to figure out what I care less about. <laughs> the, the only story here that I think is really uh, does uh, affect what's going on is this fact of the American athletes who are choosing to compete for China. You're seeing this in, in a couple of cases here, and it, it's it really unfortunate. I think it shows you that uh, we don't have a strong sense of the American nation anymore. We don't have we, we don't have teach patriotism in schools. We, we don't cultivate a healthy sense of patriotism. And when you don't have a strong country, you're not going to be able to stand up to your adversaries, whether that is China or other adversaries around the world. You need a strong country if you want to have a, a thriving international community. That's probably why people are tuning out. Yeah, Craig, corporate sponsors, for example, they had visions of dollar signs dancing in their heads. They've abandoned American values, too, and those of the civilized society, Coca-Cola, Toyota, Intel, Samsung, Airbnb, among others. We, we have to wait two years to punish our elected leaders for their conduct, but Americans can vote with their wallets tonight, should they? Sure, they, absolutely. They should boycott all these products, either officially or unofficially. Look, as far as the Olympics goes, you know, I remember as a child and as a teenager, as a young man, I couldn't wait for the Olympics. And I watched it, uh, you know, from the lighting of the of the flame right, right to the uh, dying ember. And this time I didn't watch one second of it. I'm sure most Americans actually probably went to a, a good Chinese restaurant as opposed to actually watch the Chinese, the Red Chinese Olympics this time. Uh, you know, I like to, I like to, I go back to Ronald Reagan's suggestion because this came up as a controversy in the 1980 Olympics when they're being held in Moscow. And he said, look, why don't we just go back to Greece? Let's just ha have the Olympics in Greece every four years and then we won't be caught up in politics and all these internal politics and all this corporate to welfare. And I think we need to revisit that idea. Not a bad idea. I, I want you both to comment on this. Danish newspaper came out, the most wide, widely publicized newspaper in that country, admitting, well, we failed. We didn't exactly tell the truth. We didn't speak truth to power. We were too busy being stenographers for the mainstream press. Michael, this is not only an indictment on, you know, those over in Denmark. It's a, it, it, the worldwide press, in particular the United States press, has done this, have they not? Of course. The difference here is that the Danish press is admitting it, and the American press would never do any such thing. <laughs> Actually, what the American press is doing is they have been the propaganda outlet for the ruling class the entire time. And now they are beginning to change their coverage a little bit on the masks and on the mandates, but only because the Democratic Party wants to do it, too. And why does the Democrat Party want to do it? Because the midterms are coming up. I guarantee you they're looking at their internal polling. They realize that they are dead in the water on this issue of COVID. And so they have changed their messaging and the media will change it too. They deserve no credit. They deserve no points. <laughs> we should not uh, give them <laughs> any any credibility whatsoever. They've squandered. Craig, I only have 45 seconds, but tell me, the press in America has behaved deplorably in this pandemic, yes? Of course they, they, of course they have. And that's why they're dwindling audiences. The Washington Post is losing uh, its audience. NBC is losing its audience. Uh, and, and really, this is a good thing. Power is draining away from them and going to uh, Newsmax and going to talk radio and going to conservative newspaper. No longer does the big three are, are, are they, they are not the big three anymore. And the big newspapers are not the big newspapers anymore. And that is good and, and it's healthy. And really, the founding fathers didn't want a dictatorial press. Uh, they wanted it diffused among the uh, many uh, pamphleteers and many newspapers so yep. the American people got all different opinions. Their ideology makes them small. Michael Knowles, Craig Shirley, thank you guys. Talk to you next week. After